last semester. Okay. Yeah. We're in 207. And it's chalk. Oh. Oh. Stupid. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. I know, I don't know if Shelby is in town. Do you want me to text her? Yeah, text Shelby. And then Dane just found out about so I'm not sure if he's coming and Anne. There we go. since um, some of you don't know everybody. A lot of you know because you've done this before. Awesome. But let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. So Bram, we'll start with you. Okay. Just tell us about you. Uh, my name's Bram. I just applied to dental school. I'm a senior. I'm in the training microbiology. So. Okay. And Bryn. 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 Taking data this semester. Super excited about it. In this class, so she will explain yes. that all to you. Yeah. I live two blocks that way, I have five kids, and have a great time. And her husband's in the PWS department. Yes, that guy. Dr. Sinclair. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Faith, or Hope, or Terry. You just whatever. <laughs> I'm Spencer, I'm a PD bio major, senior, 
applying to medical school right now. Well, done applying, but waiting. Awesome. Okay, and you all know me, right? Okay, so, um, and we're missing some people that just couldn't make it because people aren't in town yet. Shelby's really so proud of what she says on. Great. First so Shelby, not because she's pregnant, <laughs> just because she's sick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then Zach Hadamio's done it lots of times before. Um, I don't know where Adam kind of went here from him. Trenton couldn't make it. Anna haven't heard from her. Jason couldn't make it because he just got the job like yesterday. And Dane, same thing. So, all right. This is a great team though. We have really cool stuff on our agenda. So, um, and I'm sorry I didn't bring treats today. Oh. It occurred to me this morning as I was walking out the door, I was like, oh, I did not bake anything. I normally stress bake, so I bake a lot. So we have lots of <laughs> um, But I didn't bring any today. <laughs> sorry. It's a terrible first impression. All right, so um, I want to do an overview of the teaching first. So those of you who have TA from before know this, but you should listen again because it's important. So, um, my research program is actually in the Department of Biology, but it's focused on education. So I study pedagogy and how students best learn. So I'm always doing something funky in the classroom to test its causal effects on student learning or attitudes or whatever else. Um, and so, but because I research it, I know the latest, greatest, what's been shown to be effective. And so that's how we teach this class. And this class will be non-flipped. I went back and forth. But they're doing the flipped and the non flipped, and then I saw the data and was like, oh my goodness, we're not flipping this class. Because the data that we did on the last couple semesters, it, it definitively said, yeah, flipping for BYU students sucks rocks. So we're not flipping, we're doing it regular. Um, and it's actually because the students are so smart and because they will. Okay, no, I'm getting it. So this is how the class works, and this is why I'm saying the flip versus non flipped. So there are two parts to instruction. So when you first learn the material, which happens well, in lots of different ways, but that's when you're first exposed to the material, and then you apply the material to new situations. Okay, so in a traditional non-flipped classroom, you would learn the material in class, and if it's a traditional classroom, you learn it via PowerPoint, right? And then you would go home and do homework problems and see if you could use that material. Um, in a flipped classroom, you would learn that material ahead of time, watching like a video lecture, reading the textbook, and then in class, you would practice applying it to different and what we found in the data is that at UVU, where the students are more likely to need spoon feeding, it's a terrible way to say that, but you know what I'm talking about, they have a hard time applying it and they don't apply themselves and they just say, I don't know, I give up. Whereas at BYU, students are less likely to give up and that process of struggling with the homework at home actually benefits them quite a bit. But it means we have frustrated students sometimes because the homework is application and they don't know how to do it and they get frustrated that I'm making them actually do something. So, um, but it, it turns out it works really well for their learning, so that's what we're gonna do. So they will come to class and they will learn the material for the first time and they will go home each day. Now last semester we had homework packets due at the end of the unit and what I found with that was that students waited till the end of the unit and so the application actually didn't help them, it just frustrated the heck out of them. So this time, I am spoon feeding a little bit, and I'm making them complete the homework after each class period. So they have a homework assignment due every class period, but it's small. It's just a little bit of problems, just a few things that they have to do to apply what they learned in class. And the reason I'm doing that is because students are terrible self-regulators. That's right. No offense to you guys, but you are. It's we all true. are. Yeah. Deadlines are you know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's impossible, so I'm going to force them to do it every day. And they're not going to be happy for a minute. And then they'll realize, oh, this is great, because I remembered it when I was doing the homework because we just had it in class. And so, um, so there's classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and so every homework assignment, I believe, is due by the following. So if, they, if it's a Monday class, that homework is due by Wednesday, but time they walk into class. So they got a couple days to do it. Because you're making the homework available. I'm wondering if they're going to be working on the homework. No, class. so the homework comes available as soon as class right, ends, class done, right? and it closes That's as soon as class done. begins. Right, perfect. Yeah, I need to check that. Make yeah, sure yeah. Homework <coughs> oh, I don't know what that says. <laughs> I don't write very often. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's how we're doing the class. 
And then we are, um, oh, so before we do research project, here's the thing about in class. We don't lecture, I don't PowerPoint, as you probably all see each other class. I don't PowerPoint. Um, and so we do tons and tons of group work, and we just got in a ton of supplies to do all this group work, because this is a gigantic class. I have, this is actually the biggest class I've ever taught at BYU, 264, and it is full. So there will not be a single seat available in the MARP building in the room, so it means you guys don't have a seat. You're going to sit on the stairs. Uh, in the right There's no seat. Yeah. Until people decide to stop coming. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but right now it is full and people on the waiting list. So we might actually have more than our full that first day or two. Um, and so, but, but what we'll do is we'll, we always start class with some kind of exploration activity that requires supplies, which means we have 264 people we got to get supplies passed out to, and we need to do it in like 30 seconds, which is terrible. So we need help with UTAs, taking supplies, maybe halfway up the room, half of them, and instead of just all at the front table, because it's a big bottleneck. So when you walk into class, you need to quickly assess, and you should have assessed beforehand, you should have looked at it, what are we doing today? So you walk in, you're ready to get stuff distributed. And then they're working in groups. And because there's no free space, we can't have them skip rows, which we've done in the past. So that means we're going to tuck backpacks and you are going to climb all over people. It's going to be awesome. Think Wear pants. <laughs> Actually, I wear skirts. I know. I've been right through it. I have skirts. Yeah, yeah. I'm right through this So you're going to climb through aisles and, yeah, so when, when I say go, talk to your neighbor about this, you should be on the move around the classroom, climbing over people, and don't just say, you got it? You guys got it? You guys, no. You need to say, you got it, and they say, yep, you got it. You say, okay, explain it to me. Because they don't have it. They're just saying that because they want you to go away. So you can it. So, so make sure, that, uh, don't be afraid to get in their faces and say, hey, yeah, explain to me what you think. Ask questions, be very, very outgoing. Which is why I chose all of you in your videos or whatever else is because you can do this. So, um, I've divided the classroom up, we'll talk about that in a second, but I do want to talk about the research that's going on because this is critical that we don't screw it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna screw it up. Because this is her great. dissertation and her getting a PhD or not. So, great. it's really important. <laughs> Yeah, yes, okay. Okay. okay, so this semester is the first phase of my dissertation, and it's all about the testing effect. And the testing effect is from psychology and education research has shown that learners remember things better when they recall it from memory or are tested on something better than rereading it or recognizing it. Okay, so we would really, and furthermore, Learners also remember things better if the questions or the, the way they're tested is at a higher level, higher order of thinking than just rote memory. Does that make sense? So if you struggle to work on something, you remember that concept at that higher level better than if you were just quizzed with flashcards on memory, rote memory questions. Does that make sense? So the way we're going to test this in this class is, or in these two sections, is by, well, what we are actually interested in is whether points, level points, influence that memory in students and learners. So what we're going to do is have tests that are worth higher points and quizzes that are worth lower points. And we're going to test at the end of the semester to see if students remember the information on the tests that have higher points better than they remember the quizzes with lower points. It could go either way, and both ways will be interesting information. So the way we're going to do that is we have two sections, and the quizzes we give will, at the end of each unit, we give a quiz, and that quiz will be worth 20 points. It's every two weeks. So yeah. Practice sessions that you uh -huh, those are yeah, We're calling them practice quizzes. But they're a quiz, like close book, close note, close neighbor. Yes. Okay. Quiz. And then after the quiz, the test and the testing center will be available. And in fact, the test and the quiz are on the same unit. They're just different questions. And what's really important is that when students come into you, because students will be coming into you as TAs to find out what the correct answers were on the quizzes and the tests, you need to make sure that those students are in your section. Because each section, we're flipping the quizzes and the tests to, uh, to accommodate for variability in the classroom. So 
the quizzes in one section are the tests in the other section. Does that make sense? Okay. So they will come to you. So what you need to do is when they come into you in your practice session to say, I want to go over the test, you say, what section are you in? And they say, section five. Is that at 10 a.m.? Yes. Okay, let me help you. Just double check. Make sure they're in your section. Because and we are not telling students that that's the case. Yeah, and I don't think, oh. as a student, I don't think, okay, yes, if they're a devious student, they're going to try and find out. Yes. But just, you're as TAs, you're kind of that barrier, and you just make sure, and you don't tell them why, you just make sure they're in your section. You can look them up on campus. And you, you can look them up, yeah, they look sure. devious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on that Friday, the, the recitation sessions are almost always on a Friday. Every other week. They get screwed up because of Thanksgiving. But yeah. they're on a Friday, and then the test is available Saturday, Monday. So students are, the likelihood of somebody taking the quiz and then sharing that information with somebody in the other section and then finding out that it's yeah. slim because they happen like back to back. Yeah. Like they'll have taken the quiz and the test. The only thing is if they figure it out, because we have seven of them, right. they figure it out and then they say, oh, okay. So yeah. just don't say anything about the research to anyone. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be surprised. Yeah, this is just, it should They're be both just, giving the same treatment, points, non-points. Yeah. It's the same treatment, it's so that's same. good. Students aren't going to be up in arms and, oh, yes, they're doing their test. They're not. They're just they're different questions. questions. But it's, they're all getting both. They're all getting all the questions. They're just whether they're getting on the Friday quiz, yeah. if it's low points, or the... Saturday the test. trick is that it's available while they're taking the test to the public, right? It's available to TAs. Yeah. So that's the trick. Yeah. But it's so only we'll available to our... students during the hour. So the practice session, it will open at 10 and it will close at 10.50. Mm -hmm. It will open at 11 and it will close at 11.50. Yeah. So they don't have access after that. You guys have access right. to go through answers with them. Yeah. But they won't have access to it, so they can't share it with their roommates in the other section. Probably so are they doing do. that in class? Yes, they're doing it in so class. So they have to have a computer or a device? Yes. And is that a quiz work on phones? That's it. Yes. It works on phones. They can do it on any device. They have to have a device that will work on it. I don't know having a device. I can bring my laptop to people. Yeah, they can use your computer and I guess so. But they're going to do it in class. It's happening. 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 It's being done in Mastering Biology. So that's another thing we're implementing this semester that's new, is that Mastering Biology from the Pearson textbook, it's actually integrated into Canvas. So they don't have a choice. Once they sign up for the class and sign into Canvas, they're already signed in to Mastering Biology. And so they don't buy their materials at the bookstore. They buy the student packet at the bookstore. But they don't buy the textbook at the bookstore. It will just go onto their student account, the Mastering Biology. And they will pay for it that way. We think they're going to be happy because other classes have shown that yeah. students are happy with mini quiz, mini tests, right? Yeah. Multiple mini tests. And then the quiz shows them what the test is going to be like, right? So it's just we think from a content. student's perspective. Yeah. And we divided up the content. So like Hardy Weinberg, for instance, they might be quizzed on gene flow, but the test will have genetic drift. Or I think it's even broader than that. Like you know, Hardy Weinberg versus genetics. Yeah. It's pretty big differentiation. So the quiz will prepare them for the type of question but not the content because it will be the opposite content yeah. we need to study. They need to study all of the content. But we're not going to let them know the that end. either. They That's just have the learning outcomes. Yeah. They're responsible for all of it, for quizzes and tests. Yeah, when TAs do reviews, you just need to study all of the units, That's right. not just the last of it. That's all. Right. So it should be okay as long as people don't get wind of the flocked content. But everyone's going to sign a permission form. So they know that we're doing an implementation of testing. And if they ask, what is the implementation, you can say, we're testing the effect of Quizzes versus tests, that's really all you can say. Because mm -hmm. everybody's doing the same thing, quizzes versus tests. So, but you don't need to say, but the other class has your <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm that. Yeah, everyone's getting all the same questions. By the end of the semester, they will all have the same questions. Mm -hmm. It's just whether it showed up on a quiz or a test. So, that's pretty fun. Yes. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Are they multiple choice or are they choice? Yes, they're multiple choice. Okay. So they will all be graded for you. You don't do any exam grading. And I, I'm assuming since full section is doing the other one, the quiz and the test are going to be the same length. Yes. Yes. So the time. quiz in class, how long does that take? 50 minutes. Okay. And the testing center, they will have one hour time. Okay. I'm a little okay. nervous about that. How many questions is it? It's like 15. Oh. Short. Yeah. <laughs> it should be plenty. Like I'm For guessing short. on these yeah. practice sessions, students are going to finish early and then get help on homework or leave. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So it's really, they're really short, but they're like, any of you are with me for the, when we're doing with you, you, those apply assessments were like 17 questions long, but they took a full hour to think. Yeah. They took a full hour, but so, but, but we had no issues. We had a few accommodation students that had eight most of the time. Yeah. Will yeah. they need like extra paper? Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have scrap paper. Yeah. And that's fine. And oh, and they're, they're, no, they're not. Oh, look, that's the one class. Sorry, that's not the class of UG. So if they take it on the computer in class and it's not open book, mm -hmm. we're monitoring that. Yes. Yeah. So we have to be monitoring that they're not surfing the web. There's nothing we can do to prevent I won't tell them. And do they take the test on Canvas? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, so if you open up Canvas right now, you can actually get to it. So you, has everyone ever has everyone been able to log into Canvas? Yes? Okay. So if you get into Canvas, you can go up to the very top. It's the practice oh, the see. practice quizzes. Yeah, so here's our course, or section six. It's this practice quizzes. If you click on practice quizzes and just agree to the mastering bio, you're a TA, so you don't have to pay for it. I'm going to go on your <laughs> Okay? And this is what ours looks like from the instructor standpoint. You can see all of them. The students aren't going to see that. They're only going to see the ones that are available. So, for instance, on the first day of class, we're going to have them go in and do the testing one. And it looks like this for students. And they click on the item. And it just says on a scale of one to five, how cute is this pig? Because <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> anyway, and they just click on it, and that'll tell them whether they got they figured it out. Okay. okay. And students are gonna freak out like on the first day. Ooh, if I log in this and then I decide to drop the class, it will drop them out. They won't pay for master. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So they're fine. They can log into it the first day and all that. Okay. So. All right, so let's go through the rest of the course structure. Yeah, okay. So here is our course, and it looks the same in both sections because it is the same. The only difference is whether the content is A or B. Um, so they're expected learning outcomes. So students ever ask you for a study guide? That is it, okay? And when you're doing your weekly reviews, what should I be talking to them about? This is it. All right, so you can see for every day that they are in class, I have very detailed, this is what they should be able to do. And notice that they're mostly high level. Distinguish the difference between correlation causation, evaluate the reliability of evidence, blah, blah, blah. Derive chi square. Um, anyway, so that's the points due to that. I, last semester, I think we did like a survey after exam two or something, and half the class was like, the what? And I said, they're not. So please, just tell them the learning outcomes. It's the very first thing on the page. Okay, if you have not gone into TA bios and done your bio, please do so. Can I ask a question about that? Because the other one is Donald Trump. Uh, no, you didn't put emails in the template. Did you want to put our email? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know Donald Trump's email. <laughs> um, yeah, so put anything you want the students to know. And to get up, uh, did you figure out how to put your picture on there? I, I, I'm doing it right So you can go to files, this tab right here on the left, and you can upload a picture of yourself. I know Bram did it, and uh, Lindsay, no, Like four or five people at a time. Yeah, yeah so there looks there. like there's people here. It would be nice. Students won't know who you are. So please, yeah, so there's Jason. Please put your bio up there and do it before class starts. Do you want our section number in that as well? So, so you are only have access to your section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got so it. you're just going to put it in there. Makes sense. Yep. So, but both sections look the same, so I'm just showing you on here. Um, course key, I will figure out why you're only on trial periods, but I'll make sure that that's not the case for when the class starts. This is what course key looks like when you're logged into the class. The cool thing about course key is I've already set up when this class happens, and it when I get into the classroom on the first day, I will set the GPS location. Students have to be in the room physically, and all they have to do is open up course key on whatever device and click here, and it will take attendance. So they don't have to worry about clicker. Awesome. Yeah, hallelujah. Okay, and, and they have 30 minutes. Like, I'm being nice. And most instructors give them like five. But I'm going to give them 30 minutes. If they show up anytime in that first 30 minutes of class, they get attendance points. 
But I do think they have to click, they have to do something to give it attendance. Chris is going to come the first day and explain course key oh, to the students yeah. because I'm learning. But the, cool, the reason I chose course key is that we have 264 students in that class. We do a ton of group activities, and there is just no way that all of us will be able to talk to every student. It's just not going to happen. And so there will be students who will be sitting in the middle of the classroom, and they're frustrated, and they don't know what to do. They can have course key open on their phones. They can go to the chat, and they can say, what the heck is going on? And they can scream and shout. And anyone else in the class can answer them. So if they say, I do not get what question three is asking, anyone can answer and be like, oh, we figured out our first blah, 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 blah. Okay? But also, as TAs, you can jump onto the chat. So I'm going to have the chat always open up on the podium, and somebody's actually going to be in charge of monitoring the chat. If the same question comes through 10 times or 15 times, whatever, you need to just say to me, hey, people are really confused about it. And usually I get a feel for that as I'm walking around and talking to people that since they're confused, but if they post to the chat, that'll help too. But you can always answer the chat yourself and say, hey, this is what's going on. So that's really cool. And then all emails about this class are going to come through course key. Instead of them emailing all of you individually and emailing me, so I, go, I guess maybe we, maybe we don't need your email. Unless they want, if they wanted to contact you individually to like set up a time to meet with you, they probably need your email. But anything about the class, they just have a general question where students often would email every single one of us. Yeah. So annoying. They're going to do it on the inbox. And the inbox, they can choose from these categories. They can choose attendance, assessment, which is exams, grades, homework, lecture, and other. And each one of you is going to be in charge of monitoring whichever topic on the inbox. So you'll be the expert in that particular topic. And you'll just answer students' questions that come to you on that topic. Okay, that'll help me too because in between the two of them, it's like 550 students that I have to handle along with the other 250 in my other classes. I just can't answer everybody's email that I've So um, we're hoping that that will cut that down for me and all of us can divide the conference. Questions? Questions? Okay. So that's course key, and I will make sure you have access. I also set up on course key, and go back to. I also set up two sections for TA meetings. So we are not going to have a weekly meeting. It is just too hard to get 18 people, 19, what do you mean, together for a TA meeting each week. It's just impossible. And so what I'm going to do is every probably Friday afternoon, I will either do a video or I will write something about what's happening the next week, things to look out for, things where students are confused, any announcements. And I'm going to post it in the chat on the TA right here or if it's specific to a section. They're probably not going to be specific to a section, but you only have, you should only sign up for the section that you're in, okay? So write down this ad code. You're either this one or this one. But anything I post to the main one, we'll post to everyone, okay? So, and maybe, I can't keep doing it. Is there any reason we need them separated? Why is it? We need to combine them again. But the only thing would be is that they're talking about question exact questions. If they pull something to yeah. the major board and it's very specific about questions, that's the only problem. Well, this students won't see me. Okay. This is just for us. Then it should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is just for us. And so I will send out that weekly thing, and then you can ask questions, and you can yeah. comment, and you can answer people's questions on the chat for that week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm Expecting a few. Do you have a question, Susan? Well, yeah, but I can. Okay, okay. So what I'm expecting of you is before. So if I send it out on Friday or whatever, before that Monday, you have gone through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday's activities. Now I sent you this instructor guide, right? Mm -hmm. So it's got everything I'm going to do. It's all of my lesson plans, um, and it should look like they should all start with something like this, right? And this tells you what we're doing in class and then what they're doing is homework, right? And then the learning outcomes that are associated with that. Um, so you should go through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it has all the instructor guides. So you need to become familiar with that material because the students, they're going to be trying to work it out and they're going to be asking you questions and I can't have you going, oh, what was that question? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Like you need to be the expert on that material before you walk in. So my question was about, um, should we be setting aside an hour of our 10-week, 10 10-week 10 hours 
to do that, like to watch your video. And prepare and for the next five. That, that would be a good idea. That's just because the first schedule that all of the summers and stuff because you don't have time. Yeah. Because in the past, I'm going to probably tighten more than all video. But yeah, so you might set aside, so you're going to be three hours in class, you're going to do a one hour recitation session, so that's four. I would keep an hour that's just, or maybe even two, that's grading and preparing. And then the rest can be office hours. But since you're holding a weekly recitation session, like students shouldn't, should be attending those. And with nine of you in the classroom, there should be many at times that they can do. So that's what I would do. Yeah. Um, so that's what you talk about too. So I want you to hold a weekly review session. It's just, it's informal, but it's where you review that, that previous, if you hold it on a Wednesday, you're going to review the Friday, Monday, or Wednesday, Friday, Monday, whatever. You're just going to review the previous stuff um, that you covered up to that point. So you will have a set time that you do it every week. And location, sometimes you can get through campus scheduling, you can actually get a room. You could also just say, hey, we're always going to meet down on the second floor by the whiteboard. This hallway right here is actually fantastic. There's whiteboards yeah. here, and nobody's up here in the hall. Uh huh. No one's up, they're always over on the other side, but they're never over here, and there's whiteboards and everything. So you could say, this is where Because, I, I mean, those of you who've done weekly review sessions, how, how many students generally attend? Four. Mm -hmm. I, I actually get like 10, 15. I so get about 15. Depends on what time. Yeah, it depends on the time. And it depends on the, the placement in my semester. So it's like if it's before like a test or if it's like after particularly yeah. hard. You so you may have a crowd if you did it this hallway, it might be a little hard, but you can also have your office out in this hallway. Um, so you can pick wherever or you can say, you know, we're just going to be on the quad out by the bookstore or whatever. Um, so you need a week. So I was hoping you guys could look at your schedule and put down what you when you're going to do it, because I, I would hate for everybody to be at the same time, right? But um, why don't we do like section five, the 10 o'clock in blue, and the 11 o'clock in green. Yeah. Okay. Is, there a, is this just going to be on the TA bio, since that's the place where the students look for that? Uh -huh. So you'll put it on your TA bio, but I want to make sure we've coordinated with each yeah. other so we're not all at the same time. Okay. So if you look at your schedules and figure that out before you leave today. And then the other thing you need to decide is what you're going to do. So let me go through these assignments. Question, Danny. Do you want me to just put this on like a Google Sheet or something? Oh, yeah. Yes, thank you, computer science. Skill <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. set. <laughs> so he's going to put it on a Google Doc and send it out to you in just a second. Um, so here's what we need done. So the chat in class, you're going to be walking around helping students. So you're not going to be standing there at the podium computer the whole time. But I want you to be the ones responsible for walking up occasionally to the podium computer and make sure people are getting it. Okay? Um, the take notes and post notes. I don't want you sitting taking notes while I'm talking. Usually the person that does that just takes, was it you, Faye, last year? Just takes a picture of whatever was written on the chalkboard. On the chalkboard. And then posting it to Canvas. Well, we have a spot there for taking notes. Um, on Canvas. Yeah, so if people miss class. Super nice. Um, Although they have a plan that it's not working, they're like, well, you should have a class. You should have a class. I thought I had a plan. about the picture. Oh, is it under, I can't remember. I'll find a place. I need to write that down. I did put a place for it. Um, yeah, so that's somebody. We'll do that. And then someone I need you, somebody who thinks they can be totally on time, like early to class, like within that 10 minute passing period, they can get in there like Landon did it last time, get in there and write on the board the announcements. And that just means that you're looking at the schedule and saying, oh, we've got a quiz, a practice session this Friday, and our exam is this weekend, and homework that's due by Wednesday. So that's really what you're going to put up there, the homework and the practice sessions and the quizzes. Well, I do that. You do that? Be for both. Okay, yeah. Um, and then attendance, all of the rest of these are all on the inbox, so you're monitoring emails. But if you choose attendance, you're monitoring the emails about attendance, and then you're also transferring the attendance scores in course key over to Canvas. So do the one by one? No, no, no. no. Okay. Like, I would do it every few weeks. Okay. Just download the CSV, Great. upload. Just check yeah. it. No, 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 not every day. <laughs> just every few weeks, here. just keeping that up to date. Here. And if anyone has a problem with attendance, they're going to email you and be like, I was here that day. And you're going to say, hey, GPS shows you were not. 
<laughs> Sorry. GPS never lies. GPS never lies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Assessments. If you're that, you're monitoring the emails on assessments, and then if they have any problems with the test in the testing center or the quiz, or they need to make it up, you cannot. You don't have to administer all those makeups, but you can help them find somebody who can administer makeup. Um, grades. That's if they have questions about grades. So that's an inbox one, and then you will be in charge of, there's a couple things that they take like on Qualtrics that you'll just need to import the grades. It's not that big of a deal, but there are a few times when that happens. Homework, you're monitoring the emails about homework and then making sure that the homework on Canvas is not glitching in some way. Um, so I would recommend if you're a homework person that you check the link and the homework assignment each day before it's going to be assigned just to make sure it looks right. Sometimes I, I, mean, I only have homework done until like September. 28th or something, so that's another thing you'd be like, hey, Dr. Shea, there's no homework today. Let me know, because I forgot. Um, lecture, that's the questions on the lecture, and then any other issues they have with lecture. And then other is the other categories. So if you feel like you're really good at being a wild card, that's, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and you can always, if you can't answer the question, please forward it on to me, and I can answer it. So I'm hoping that most of the emails I get will be from you guys saying, this student needs this, and I can't. So I just want you to like filter, <laughs> filter emails before they come to you. Okay, so you need to sign up for that. Last thing we need to sign up for, what time is it? Okay, last thing we need to sign up for. I'm so proud of myself for making a pseudo panoramic picture oh, from my cell phone. Okay, is this all off? That's oh, why I'm gonna... Yes, I'm gonna bring the blinds down. You can see it, but anyway. Um, <laughs> I divided the classroom into nine sections. Into eight sections. I can't. No, nine. That's making good. This back two rows is actually 30 students. And I figured that's really cool. Back two rows, you can actually reach over and talk to those two rows. Now, and these are sort of soft lines because groups will turn and talk to each other. And so this may not, like, these guys might be a group. So, uh, you know, we'll just decide. General section. General, general area where you're going to hang out. I would like you to hang out in that same area always because you will get to know those students who sit there. They will get to trust you. I, I find that really helps. And then as far as grading though, you're going to have to grade homeworks. You're in charge of 30 students approximately. Maybe a little bit like 34 because Brent's not going to be great. Um, so we can assign that out also and we're just going to go by alphabet or we can go by assignment. What do you guys prefer? So you can either like have one assignment where you grade all 264, or we just do, you grade 30 on this assignment. Yeah, is that better? Okay. So let's do that. So we'll, so, um, Brynn, you want to pull up the alphabet in the class? Yeah. Or just pull up the alphabet? Oh. No. You need to pull up class rules. Do we have a rule? Oh, I might have to do that. Yeah, we have a rule. I will pull up class rules and assign you 30. 34. 34. 34. Yeah, I'll assign you, I'll assign you an eighth of the class. Yeah, that's it. All right, so 265 was the total. Yeah, 264. Anyone have a preference? You can call it out. Do we have the navy one? So my belly suit. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> you get navy for sure. Okay, so and you're in which section? Which section are you? Five. Okay. Sorry. That is a perfect <laughs> idea, actually. Anyone else have a preference? Uh, Sam. I'll take Lieutenant Blue. Lieutenant Blue Navy? It's light blue. Light blue. Oh, <laughs> are you in five or six? Six. That's funny, I was really like, missing the joke, Sam. The sides are oh, <laughs> sorry, Sam, color. you're not Susan. Okay, anyone else have a preference? I'll take yellow. I'll take yellow. And you're in both? You want to yep. both? Yep. Okay. And this is okay. upper right, right? Upper right. Yes, Bram, where do you want to be? Um, in which section are you? Five. Dark green or light or lime? Lime. Choice. Okay, Faith. Um, Which I'll, section are you? Six. I'll take lime as well. Okay. Uh, ben. Um, section six, uh, purple. Yeah. Oops. Um, Danny. Uh, I'm good with whatever. People. Are you in section five or six? Five. 
I'm giving you orange. Sure. Okay. Sam, I already got you. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Matthew. Yeah. Thank you. Orange, which section, section are you? Six. Okay. Do you prefer um, yeah. Ashley. Classic. Wow, I'm getting um, names very slowly. <laughs> which section are you? I'm in section six. I'll take uh, Navy in section six. Okay. Okay. Um, Susan, you already said that's Spencer. Okay. And then the rest of these people who are watching will have to choose theirs. Okay, perfect. And Danny, did you get that on? Line. Yeah, I just replied to the email you sent out this morning. Oh, good. Actually, I reply Perfect. All, so. Perfect. Okay, so check your emails and okay. sign up for one of those tasks and when your weekly review is. And then we will have that. Thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Let me make sure I've covered everything. Let's see. Monitor chat, monitor. Oh, so exams and quiz reviews. So we, we briefly alluded to this. They're going to come in Friday. Oh, that's, They're yeah. going to take the quiz. It's not going to give them feedback. They're going to freak out and be angry, just telling you now. They want to know what they got right and wrong. I'm, I'm fine if you, you know, take them out in the hall and let them know right then, whatever, but you, they need to come see you individually. We can't have it give them feedback, unfortunately, just because of the fact that the other class can get hold of it and have all the answers to your test. That's, that's the so, other place you have to be careful is the review, because that's before, right? So you have a group of people coming into your review for the quiz and the test. You say, yeah, and the other which sections. section do you belong? Yeah, exactly. In which section do you belong? Section but five. if the, if the students finish right then, you'll know they're in your section. No, but this is before in the review session. But we're not going to go over specific questions. That's true. Yeah, Just no. Go over subject. Don't so, go. Okay. That's yeah, true. don't ever go through. So they, if they want to go true. through their tests and their quizzes, they need to just meet you. Test, but. Okay, that's yeah. good. That's true. So, and so that's, the and then exams too, same thing. Once they take the exam in the testing center, someone can give them any feedback. So they'll have to come to you. Yeah. Are we doing points back? Yeah. No. Yes. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Yeah. I, like I think we're not going to give them points back just because it might mess with the research. Right? We're not going to oh. give points oh, back. Oh, exactly. They points back. Yeah, they got like five points back. But they, but they was like they only had three exams this semester. So. I mean, it does matter if they come to That's the thing. They got points back when they would come to the TA. Mm -hmm. And what would that be against the research? Well, if they... Because people who are busy... Oh, five points, points back on their quiz, think, but can we add it separately? That's the thing. If I get the data yeah. and we add the points right. separately, then... Mm -hmm. I, it is so that, that would be... Gets on the it does just make an extra back. credit, an extra credit point in, it's at the end instead of adding it to their actual test. Does that make sense? So the test weight differently. But I think it does yeah. motivate them. Well, it's just as soon as they review it, you should put it in. So we just need but, another oh, We should need another column. column. That's right. Well, But that doesn't work for percentage. We're going to figure out how to Last semester, you did it where as soon as the test closed, someone exported everything for research purposes. Although, oh, there we go. Right? And Let's then do that. everything got before. Updated. Let's do that. Before so they, as soon as the practice session ends, we need to download the data. Who's <coughs> the the assessment. Oh, yeah. Whoever's the right. assessment person can do that. Mm -hmm. well, like yeah. I like data since I like data tests. Okay. Yeah. It's like on the Download yeah. data. And, as soon as, and then, okay, so then. Okay, are they getting okay so here's what we're going to do. We'll, we're we're sliding on the spot. So when they review a quiz or a test, they can get one question back. So the 17 questions, good. they That's get pretty yeah. good. one question back. Not bad. Okay. So you just go right in and change their score. Just change it. Just just for, just scroll down to one of them that was a zero and put a one point. You can change the score that way. Don't do it in the fudge points. Just do it okay. in an actual question. Right. Ooh. Do, we, we don't need any kind of record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because how are we downloading the data? You're just downloading their scores. You don't have individual. Individuals? No, we don't because it's content A, content B. Oh, and it's yeah. just the final. The it's final, the final yeah. meeting individual will get that the testing center. Is the final in the testing So we'll figure that out for the final. We'll figure out how to Yes, do. I know, hallelujah. We're going to do tons of tests in the testing center. <laughs> yeah. This semester is going to be better all around. Yeah, it's just a final. Okay, so we're okay with, 
we're okay with just adding it in anywhere, it doesn't matter. But I guess we did it in the fudge points before, so we knew who would come in and come in. Yeah. I think that would be good. Just Let's do it in the fudge points. points. Okay, so like just that scratch that. Do it in the fudge points. Is there, is there even like a good way of like a little, reviewing, like, if you're it's looking it's at the grades, yeah. mm -hmm. if you're just looking at grades, there's, there's nothing that says whether or not someone had a fudge point. No. I think there's like a little tick mark in the top left or top right of the box that shows whether or not there's comments know. or fudge points or something, but. See, it, you're going to have to go of, into, oh, we're going to do this in Master of Biology. Yeah. yeah, it's not in Canvas. It's not in Canvas. Oh. Okay, well, hang on, let me see if I can figure that out real fast. Yeah, let's find out. Otherwise, we got to just put it in. So the way that it's set up right now is that they don't get feedback, right? Yes, we don't yeah. want feedback. We don't we tell them if it's right or wrong. I want to change that so it doesn't say quiz Do you think that's going to be No, no. Wait, it's not. Okay. They're just going to have to be like, we'll say B for biology. <laughs> It was A and A, A for two sections. Awesome. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. No, leave it for my sanity. I gotta know. Okay. You're fine. So, um, yeah, so we need to find out how to give feedback. Luckily, we have a couple weeks to figure this out. Yeah. So, two weeks. Yeah, from today. From today? Okay. <laughs> It's going to come at us fast and furious. And oh, it's yeah. Just, so, yeah, and you're, <laughs> you're only two of the six classes I'm teaching. So, this is going to I need to add a time limit to all of these. Okay. No, it opens. We've got a Oh, right, 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 right. So, you're good. But we need to just figure out how to put points in so that whoever's in charge of the assessments and downloads the scores. Assessments um, is including quizzes. And do we, they can see their score after they finish, right? Yeah, and that's okay. fine. They that's can see their fine. score. We just don't want them to have individual pieces. Okay. So I suppose, Faith, if you just did right at the end of class, when it closed, you just download the scores from Mastering. Wait, it might be integrated. It might already populate the gradebook. Oh, We'll, well, we'll find out with the we'll test. Yes, we'll find out. If it automatic, because I'm thinking if you just download and upload it into the gradebook, then then the TAs can just go into the gradebook and add a point. Yeah, but what we have to, we probably have to add a comment in the gradebook so that students can come back and do it more than once. Yeah. yeah. That's what we did last semester. Is there? A it should be too hard. We just comment fudge point. There wasn't Canvas. I don't know though. Okay. okay. I have another question when you're done with that. Because yeah. I do not see any order where you can add. What do you have to motivate students to come in and do this? So really, Canvas is just for grades. They're not even using it for, like, their... Oh, all the homework, homework assignments are homework. homework. Yeah. yeah, so if you look at, like, um, the homework for human evolution, they'll actually click it. It's a quiz in Canvas. We're going to probably have all the students using the um, messaging system on Canvas. I know, and I'm going to stress it to them over and over and over and <laughs> over and over again to not email me. Well, just on this one. I never do. Do you see how many? There's no way do you see that I have uh, 63 unread emails in my inbox? Is there any way to turn it off? Uh, I can't turn it off. Uh, in settings. Uh, I don't think so. Is there a way to have like an automatic reply? That's what we need. Automatic like, don't reply. email me here. Email this, email this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because um, I know like regular email can do that. Yes. Okay, I'm yes. it's good call Ashley. Because every time they do that, they'll be like, oh, I did it wrong. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Because I do, I guess, too. Through the testing center, through the testing center, they need to bring their computer. To the testing center? Yeah. It's paper. No. no. Mm -hmm. It's paper, but how are we mm -hmm. timing it? Did I send it already? The testing I center can have a time limit. You have to yeah. submit your test. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you don't bring it to the so count it's paper, and it's yeah. just fill in. They will bubble, bubble, bubble. sheet, and it, they, they'll scan it and send it to us. Like so time. once that Monday is done, then we can download those okay. before they, yeah. So we'll have those scores, but those scores will be from the testing center, which is populate. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it's really easy. <coughs> so that's, is that the assessment person that does that? It seems like a lot. So the assessment person, or uh -huh. or you, the assessment person, person wants me to do it. Two weeks. Actually. Um, so do they have like points off? Like I know when I have time tests, it's like, if you don't turn your test in, then you get one point for every minute. Oh, the test you said that. That's what I was yeah. to I think you can set anything you can tell me about. I must have to set that. 
I don't know. I've never done a time test. Yeah, that's what I'm. Saying. So yeah, yeah I'll probably because they points. can take longer. The testing center won't like. They don't take. They don't have to take their tests. Yeah, that's what's tricky. Yeah. But normally for me, if it's like, you know, every two minutes over, you get five points off. Like, that's a big, like, yeah. I better turn it in. Uh, that's what I'm a little nervous about. My son has made that five minutes. Oh, that's they charge me a dollar a minute. And you're, like, <laughs> charge you money. And you're, like, the devil. And, like, by the time I was done, I was like, I know. Oh, she hates it. And it's two kids, so yeah. I'm like, just, like, oh, yeah. just lost 20 bucks this morning. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. They'll never let you off of the first time. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. She is that maybe she's a top of the first time. I know that really well. <laughs> um, Back to the grades, there's a box here that will allow the students to rework their tests. So let students rework completed items after the due date. This work will not be saved and will not affect the students' grades. So then they can go in and rework it with a TA without us. The only problem is they can rework it on their own and show their friend that oh, yeah, uh, you're right. the answer is right. So we can't um, do that. We've got to tightly control on that. Yeah, that's the only way I see on here. Yeah, I see. Oh, we're gonna have tons of problems. How? <laughs> this is gonna be tricky. It's always tricky, but that's education research. Yeah. We're not out tracing through the field catching gazelles, but we are. Are you in here? Okay. We're done. Eleven. He's at twelve. Is it one? Oh, it's twelve. It's eleven fifty. Eleven fifty. I get two minutes. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> we just need to. Oh, and we're sending. Out I will Google figure doc. out this feedback and send you an email. Yeah. Thank you. Fill in the Google Doc. So assignments are all in Google. Everybody here, they have to put the file. You have to go to files and upload a JPEG. Yeah, and when you yeah, and when you edit, you find it online. I just edited the JPEG. I was wondering. I just edited the file. Oh, is that right? That's why I did it. You got it though. You got it. Okay. Thank you. Oh, shoot! We didn't talk about the assignments. So out in the hall, I have a few supplies need to be built before the semester starts. So if you're looking to start working like right now. Oh, we do get hours. To build stuff. And I want oh, to have a student packet for all of you, so please take one before you leave. Hey? Are those the ones you said you weren't collecting on? I know, the bookstore sent me some, so <laughs> if you want one.